I wanted to find different artists that have totally different, you know, processes and materials. Yeah, everyone's from Montana, Butte, Montana, actually. Um, my friend Jay Furman, he lives in Palm Springs, but he developed the vinyl records in Butte, Montana, and uh, he does some just amazing work. Uh, Glenn Botus, he's a, he's a professor at the University of Montana Western in Dill, Montana and uh, he teaches all kinds of stuff, photography, art, uh, figure drawing, um, classical studies, uh, art history. Um, he's, uh, he used to run, run the Art Chateau in Butte, Montana with the Butte Syllable Art Foundation. Um, Sean Crow, is, and these are all Greek studies, um, Greek goddesses, and uh, I really like, uh, his colors are just amazing. And he, he tells me that he spends about a month and a half on one picture and uh, spends a lot of time on them. And I, I think they're just great. I like the light one. This is my favorite. Like I said, I think this one's got a good chance of not sticking around. You know? <laughs> Who's this behind you? Um, Corey Grace. And Corey, uh, he's living in Missoula right now. And Corey does a lot of different types of work. And uh, he does tattoos. He's a tattoo artist. But, uh, he does a lot of mediums and it's like you come one day and he's doing one thing and the next day is something totally different so um, it's hard to uh, it's hard to be completely representative and then Marcy James uh, she teaches at the University of Montana and she teaches photography over there and uh, she does a lot of this um, she documents Butte with uh, um, flashlight photography a lot of it where she'll light something like this piece for instance right here this is from the metals bank building and uh, you see where the light is so she opens the shutter up and then she goes with the flashlight you know and then it catches that whole trail and you don't see her all you see is the flashlight light painting uh-huh light painting Garrett Smith is uh, kind of he's almost a professor of biology at Montana Tech and he plays like 15 instruments so like four or five bands uh, still has time to crank out art. Yeah, this is my favorite wall right here. I like how these go together. These are really great. It's, this is amazing. This piece. I mean, uh, I've never seen that uh, people use vinyl like that before. Have you? Uh, no, no. He's the only one I've seen. Yeah. Uh huh. It looks like a bronze. I've right? seen people make cups out of it and uh -huh. um, uh -huh. bowls and decorative uh -huh. things. Yeah. I've never seen anyone do that. No. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm a guest down. curator, yeah. I only put in one piece because I felt like that was enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so basically I started right here. I drew this one particle, right? And just drew it arbitrarily, right? Then I repeated this particle. I studied its area of the particle, of its intersection. Then I took that area and I got a seven and I got an eight. Then I took the smaller part and I got five. And then I related that and I got the four. And then I started all over over here with the one particle, I doubled it to get an area, then I doubled that area to get a, this is my unit two piece. And then when you go up by these polygons, all the relationships are based on these ratios, exact ratios of one circle to an area. And the, the particle and the areas are arbitrary because you can increase or decrease them and it wouldn't change the interactions whatsoever. And over here I kind of had fun. I, uh, I did a nine in the middle. And then eight, four, five, six, seven, and three, and you can see how the how these will line up. Um, every other one lines up, and even with these, like this is kind of like a chakra or a map totem. Uh, if you picture these all spinning and everything, you can see how one of these would go into the other one, you know, and then it would spin and then go to the next one. And because the circles that connect these these interactions, like this circle, for instance, right here, if you put that circle on this circle, that is when you get the um, nine-sided circle, right? Because that's the exact relationship. But if you study all the intersections, like this one here, and this one here, and this one here, those have already been um, found in the previous polygons. So it's all it's all one network, and it's based on one particle. And uh, this is the fine structure constant, uh, something that I believe is, is comprised of prime numbers. And if you take the sequence, it's a 136-digit sequence, and uh, one iteration is a 311, 17, 37, 61, and 13. 
if you take the prime numbers by parts of each of these in pairs, you get this sequence, which is 136 digits, breaking into 17 parts in eight uh, rotations. If you take their harmonic identities, um, you can also add and subtract them. Down here is what I did. Um, you can, uh, there's an interval harmonic and a number harmonic. So with every number sequence, you have an interval sequence. The interval sequence is equal to the number sequence, and you can uh, add or subtract, divide, and multiply these sequences, and they come out as each other, you know, because it's the same thing. Uh, it's like music. The, the number is the notes, and the spacing is the interval. That's the timing. And that's how math works. It's, it's got those two parts, you know. And people pay attention to the numbers, but they forget about the, the, the pattern. You know, it's like Jim Hendrix. It's the space in between, you know. That's the important part. You, they're both parts. And so uh, with prime numbers, they're very uh, connected like that. Like right here, this is uh, the prime number 29. And it's comprised of 17 and 13. And if you take this sequence, you notice that every other pair is from one of the other prime numbers. And so when they connect, what you have is you have one that's going clockwise and one that's going counter. And they can't connect if they're not moving opposite directions, they're like a DNA. So you've got one that's going like this and one that's going the opposite. So if they're both going the same way, they, they can't connect, right? So they got to go opposite directions. So that means numbers have polarities, rotations, charges, so that they can connect and not connect. And uh, their compositions and the, the, the particles are all the same. I mean, it's basically just one. Um, one particle. Uh, one day I just realized, I'm like, that's a work of art, you know? It's, it's not just this thing I've been working on for 11 years, this harmonic theorem, you know? Because I started out working on the, um, this thing called the, the Riemann-Zeta hypothesis, or the Riemann-Zeta hypothesis that, by this German mathematician. And uh, it talks about uh, prime numbers and their predictability and when they occur. And he said that all prime numbers have this uh, this part where they split, this duality, and the duality thing is easy to find. You can find that in any sequence, but um, the uh, people don't know how prime numbers work, and one thing I found with prime numbers is that there's compositions of one another, and uh, I've never heard that, you know? But to me, it's pretty evident. <laughs>